really kind of the heart of the season. Things are really picking up and getting good around the world of golf. And we've had some fantastic winners of the Chevron through the years. Most recently, got the likes of Jennifer Cupcho, defending champ, that UCLA Bruin, Patty T, Miriam Lee, Jin Young Ko, Pernilla Lindbergh. I mean, she made a zillion putts taken down in B Park back in 2018. So for more, let's welcome in our own Paige McKenzie from Houston. She'll be a part of the broadcast. It's great to see you. What are your big thoughts, Paige, on this week? Well, big thoughts for a big event, uh, and that's how it feels, Damon and Eamon. It, it's one of those things when you walk in, you're around town, you see the banners, you see the posters, and when you get on site, you get the feeling and understanding that this is a huge major championship, and I think that's what the women are most like looking forward to, is being and treated like major champions. And to to add to that, uh, one of the things that I learned this morning just walking the grounds is this golf course is in perfect and mint shape. But they are going to undergo a $10 million renovation once this championship is done. And that shows that kind of level of commitment that they have here at Carlton Woods, but also with what Chevron has done to this championship. So, Paige, I guess the players are going to learn a new venue two years in a row, even if they're staying in the same place. What are your impressions? You've been out there looking at the <laughs> golf course. What are your impressions on the club at Carlton Woods? Well, when I'm looking at what this golf course demands of the players, it's going to be a precision-based golf course. You're going to have to hit it off the tee into good position because these greens are relatively small and very severe if you were to miss them. So a highly penalizing golf course if you're missing the greens. They have these large collection areas on most of the greens that are pretty well down, so below the surface of the putting green. and and are quite grainy. I was walking around the practice rounds today and one of the players, an LPGA Tour winner in fact, said to her coach as she was trying to chip from there, I don't know how to hit this. She was trying a wedge, trying to loft it up, then tried a lower lofted club, club bouncing it into the hill, ultimately pulled out putter. You're going to see a variety of those types of shots around this golf course, and it will challenge the players in their short game. So I think the player that minimizes the amount of times that they're going to be chipping around these greens is certainly going to succeed here. Wow, glad to know that sometimes even the pros struggle with the short game. Paige, what are some key holes <laughs> that you're focusing on this week? Yeah, I'm, ch I'm taking a look at these par threes. Uh, the third, the seventh, 12th, and 17th holes are all par threes. They all average between 160 to 186 yards on the scorecard. And the reason why I'm paying attention to them in particular, I mentioned the greens are not large. Uh, there are moments in those greens, the, the 12th and the seventh in particular, that they're only 10 paces deep. All four of those greens are relatively shallow, averaging around 15 paces from front to back and long width-wise. And because of that, I think the players are going to have to be really precise on their club selection. I was walking around and, and Megan Kang said to me, the last time we were in Texas, we played uh, not too far from here at Champions Golf Club for the U.S. Open in, in 2020, and those greens were so big. These are small for Texas. Paige, we just had Brittany Lincecum on, who hit two of the more iconic shots into the 18th hole of the old Mission Hills course in yeah. the California desert. How does the 18th hole here in Texas compare to what people are so familiar with at this tournament? It's slightly different. You also have water that comes into play all along the left side and just short of the green. It is a par five. Uh, today, given the wind directions coming out of the south, which has been consistent the last couple of days, it's not going to be reachable for very many players, if any at all, uh, given that it comes into play pretty strong off of the tee ball. Uh, so a slightly different risk reward style of hole. But I will mention that, again, that water does come in off the left. That's a theme across this golf course. If you have any trouble with anything on the left, that's going to be a problem. Six out of eight holes that have water on it, they come into play on the left side, whether it's off the tee or into the green. So something to, to pay attention to uh, as these players approach the holes, that if there's a left tendency, a left miss tendency, excuse me, that could certainly play, play a role and be very intimidating for some of the players out here. Paige, you've talked a lot of golf through the years, talked about Evian feeling big. Kingsmill, to me, always has felt mm -hmm. big. Does this week still feel big, even though it's a new venue? 
It does. Uh, it, it kicked off earlier in the week with the past Champions Dinner. I had a chance to run into Judy Rankin and Sandra Post, Julie Inkster, and Pat Hurst last night. Talked to them a little bit about what that evening was like, reminiscing with old friends, seeing this generational thread that goes through. I think they're trying to keep and maintain, maybe even elevate, the level in which they celebrate their past champions. So that was a key part of the, the week early on. We know what they're going to do and to trying to continue the, the tradition of, of jumping in a pond uh, with robe and slippers included. And I think that all of those things comfort the players in knowing that, hey, this is a big, big venue, a big event, and everyone's treating it as such. I think that's continued throughout uh, what we've seen so far this week. Speaking of the jumping in the pond page, we had Tim Huber, the director of agronomy from the Club of Carton Woods on the show a couple of days ago, and he mentioned they've put in what he referred to as gator wire. Now, he said there are no gators in the water and it's not yeah. snake season, but the mere mention of either one is enough for me. If you were there with that trophy on Sunday, would you jump into that pond? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I'd have floaties, I'd have somebody with a, a BB gun maybe, I, I don't care what it is, you're going in the water. Now I don't know if my opinion's the same as everybody else in the field, but they built a very nice platform that all the players are walking by today as they exit the 18th green. So they are well aware of what it will look like, they can dream about it each and every night leading into that final round. I've always wondered why we haven't seen yet a player pack the floaties, do something really fun anticipate the jump coming on Sunday afternoon. I, I look forward to and I hope that is the case this year. Paige McKenzie ain't scared from the state of Washington. Yep. She's as tough as they come. Have a great <laughs> week, Paige. Thanks, you guys. Have a good rest of the show.